G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and this is a quick video. How many times have I said that and failed epically? This will go on one of those epic fail videos, you know, there could be a piece of this where I say this is a quick video and three hours later I'm still talking. But I'm hopefully going to make this a quick video. What I want to talk about is the YouTube. Uh, YouTube have sent an email to all their content creators saying we're changing the terms and conditions under which you are paid. And of course they can do that because one of the terms, one of the conditions is that they can change those terms and conditions whenever they like. And we have no input. They say these are the new terms and conditions, click accept or all your videos will disappear. And I believe that's what the, um, that's the word on the street is that with this latest change, if you don't accept it, then all your videos will be marked private. So if I hadn't accepted it, then come the 15th of June, all the RC model reviews videos would have disappeared off the face of YouTube. So do I have a choice? No, I don't. And this is a worrying thing because there's a lot of people like myself, I'm perhaps more exposed than many, but there's a lot of people now trying to make a living out of creating these YouTube videos. And the problem they face is that we're hanging on a wire. You know, at any stage, YouTube, Google could cut that wire and we're done. No more videos, no more money. And that's what could happen. They could come along tomorrow and say, well, right now we're paying you 55% of the revenues generated by the advertising we're going to pay you 5% and if you don't like it, bugger off. And what can we do? Nothing, because we are at their mercy. So what I need to do, because I'm supporting my wife and I'm trying to, you know, I live from month to month. There's not enough money to save anything, barely enough money to pay the bills. So what I need to do as a content producer is make sure that I'm not sitting here while Google holds a gun to my head. I need to be able to say, well, if YouTube do get all snotty and decide to, you know, shut down the revenue options for YouTube, then at least I've got a fallback position. So that's what I need to do. Now, a lot of people have said to me over the years, well, you should sell t-shirts and caps and, and um, you know, maybe sell products, you know, and I'm saying, no, 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 no. For a start, there are two reasons I don't want to go down that track. The first one is I don't have the time. As I say, there's a video I'm doing at the moment about the, you know, a day in the life. And when you look at that, you'll see that there's really not a lot of spare time in my life. I get up well before the sun rises this time of the year and I'm working well into the night doing a lot of stuff just to pay the rent and the food bill and things. And I don't have the time to sit down and, you know, organize the sale of t-shirts and caps and mugs and, and model products. And I particularly don't want to sell model products because that's the other reason. I don't want to compromise my objectivity. Now, there are a lot of people who start out with good intentions reviewing model products and other products online, and they, you know, people start subscribing, and then they realize, oh, gee, if I actually sold some of these products, I can make a bit of money. And I mean, I get pestered. There's not a week goes by when I don't get an email from one of the new Chinese online retailers saying, um, please come and look at our site. Please look at the products. Choose any product you like. Give it a review. Join our affiliate system, you know, and I'm thinking, mm, yeah, right. So. I tend to, like all the products I've got from Banggood, for, exa for example, I've purchased. I haven't had freebies, you know, and I've got other, there's a company called Gearbest, and they've been, uh, Adam from Gearbest has been sending me emails saying, hey, hey, choose a product, choose a product, review it, review it. And I'm looking, and if I find a product I want to review, then I will probably buy the product. Because part of the whole review process is not just looking at the product, it's looking at the people behind it and the service that you get. And I've found that it would be a very stupid company that offered you a free product and then didn't back it up and ship it quickly. But if you go in anonymously and they don't know you from a slice of toast bread, then you can find out just how well the support, the service and the delivery is. And that's just as important as the product itself. So sometimes I take free products because I know the company involved. Uh, other times, you know, to do the review process, you've actually got to buy it so that I can say, oh, don't buy from these people, they're crap. And for example, you know, I've mentioned in another video, I bought some stuff from SDS and I got burned. So I say, SDS, well, you might want to use it, but you know, not a company I intend to use in the future. Anyway, getting back on track because I'm wondering and this short video is turning into another bloody long one. So what I need to do is diversify my revenue sources where I earn my money from. And ruling out selling stuff, means that I don't have a lot of other options and I'm not going to take on a sponsor. I've been offered sponsorship by a number of companies and um, some of them are household names in the model industry. But as soon as I take on a sponsor, like, I mean, look at the Flight Test Channel, that's taken on sponsors from time to time. And it's a great channel and it's fun and it's interesting and it's humorous. But, you know, I, I just can't get over the thing that even if I took on a sponsor, it would have to be seen to change my objectivity. Even if it didn't, people would perceive that, hey, he's sponsored by this company. He's probably not going to say as much bad about them as perhaps he should. So there you go. Um, I'm not going to take on any sponsors. I'm not going to sell any products. I don't want to get into the swag thing. I may later on, but at this stage, no. So the only thing I sell, the only thing I've got of value to offer people is the videos I make. And right now, the only way I deliver those is through YouTube. 
And the only way I make money out of them is when YouTube shares some of the ad revenues from me. And to be honest, I mean, YouTube, the reason I got this email from YouTube was they've announced this new service where you can pay 10 bucks a month to Google or YouTube and you won't see any ads on YouTube when you look at the videos. And what YouTube's thinking is, well, people will pay $10. And, what we'll, and they've said to the content producers like myself, we'll take all those $10 subscriptions, put them into a big pot. We'll take our 45% that we use to cover our costs and make our profits. And of the remaining 55%, we'll divvy it up and send it out to you content creators based on the percentage of the total content views that your channel got. So when you get a small channel like mine, and yeah, mine, I've got, what is it, 80,000, 85,000 subscribers on this channel and tens of millions of views, but it is still a small channel by in the bigger picture. Look at, um, what is it, PewDiePie? I mean, what's he got, 37 million subscribers and most of his videos get millions of views. I'm nothing, I'm insignificant compared to that. Um, so in that respect, when they take that big pool of the 55% remaining money and divvy it up, my, the odds that I'm gonna get much is pretty small. I'll probably fall below the rounding level and so maybe I'll get nothing out of it. But I don't have a choice, I have to accept this or I'm done for, you know, all my videos will disappear. So what I need to do is look at another way of delivering my videos to you. And what I've mentioned once before, I think, is the concept of a premium channel. It's a channel where I'll put extra content up there, more, perhaps more in-depth stuff, um, and perhaps I'll do some more um, in-depth tutorial stuff, some more information, try and make it something that gives a lot of extra value, because really we're talking about an exchange of value here. Any business is based on an exchange of value. That's something a lot of people don't realize, but those are the people who business, whose businesses fail. Every business is built on a value exchange, and what I'm giving you is the value of my videos. What you're giving me at the moment is the value of your eyeballs, which Google values, and sends me 55% of what they think is a fair value through the advertising. So. You're getting value, I'm getting value. Google gets value. All the partners in the relationship have a balanced value, right? Um, if one partner tries to take too much, then the whole thing falls apart. For example, if, I, uh, if Google decided, well, we're gonna take 85% and just leave you with 15%, then probably YouTube would crash and burn because the content producers like myself who invest an awful lot of time and effort would say, no way, I'm only getting, I know I've done the sums, I'm only getting five or $6 an hour as it is, I'm not going to go down to $3 or $2 an hour just because you guys get greedy. I, I, I give up. And so they'd lose a lot of things. Likewise, if YouTube started plastering ads not only at the beginning but halfway through and three quarters of the way through and overlaid banners and all that sort of stuff all through the videos, you'd probably say, oh, it's just not worth the hassle. I mean, you know, look at all this advertising. I give up. I'm going to just, you know, I resign. I unsubscribe from YouTube. So everyone has to get a fair deal. And so when I look at this premium content channel, I need to ask you guys a question. How much is it worth? And I mean, I'm looking at it and thinking, well, if I can commit to say three or four good quality videos a week, um, on, you know, be they in-depth reviews, be they build videos, be they um, tutorials, uh, explanations of how stuff works, how the technology works, the kind of stuff I've been doing today, but perhaps, you know, a little more, a little more consistently and a little more in depth, maybe even a little more professionally produced then what is it worth to you in a year to subscribe to that? And I was thinking, 10 bucks, 20 bucks a year? I mean, it's, you know, what is it? Is it just over a, a, dollar a, week, a dollar a month? It's not a lot of money, but from where I sit, because I've got a lot of subscribers, if enough of them, if enough of you guys were to say, yeah, we'll throw you, you know, 10 bucks or 20 bucks a year for your premium content channel, then it would be worthwhile because then I'd have the money to set up the channel. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't go through YouTube because YouTube has these draconian terms and conditions. It's really, you know, when you look at what happens out there, there have been people like myself who create content and monetize it, who have basically got the boot. Because when YouTube introduced its content matching system, there are all sorts of stories that went on the wires where someone got three copyright strikes because they put up some videos and the content matching system determined that the natural bird song, you know, a field full of grassy, you know, grassy field full of flowers and tweeting birds, the content match flagged it as a copyright infringement and they got three of them, so that was the end of them. And there's no real easy appeal process with Google. You know, you tell me, what is the email address of YouTube? It doesn't seem to have one. You've got forms and things you can fill out and it says, you know, um, did this answer your question? And if you say no, it says, well, tough luck. You know, you can't talk to us. They have a forum, a, a user a sort of content creator support forum, but that's manned by volunteers. It doesn't seem to be officially manned by YouTube. So oh, what do you do? If you have a problem, not a lot of places to go. And so I can't afford the risk of you know, something like that happening, Google making a change and whatever. So if I go to a premium content channel, I'll have to put it somewhere else. I've looked at Vimeo. Oh, there goes my phone. One moment, please. Sorry about that. That was somebody with a problem with some Sky Zone goggles and they wanted me to
have a, answer a few questions. And I did, so that's what I do. Anyway, moving on. As I say, YouTube isn't the best place to do a premium content channel because if YouTube decided to kick me off for whatever reason, for example, if a member of Model Flying Zealand's executive joined the YouTube board team, I'm sure I'd be off in the blink of an eye, but I need to protect myself against that kind of thing happening. Now, um, you know, YouTube packing a snot. So Vimeo, it has a Vimeo Pro system where you can um, sign up, but they rent or sell videos on a per video basis, which isn't really practical because what I want to provide is a system where you can pay an annual fee and get access to all the videos that I produce during that year, and that makes a lot more sense to me. So I need you to tell me what it's worth. As I said, how much would you pay? 10 bucks, 20 bucks, thousand dollars? <laughs> <laughs> Someone might. Anyway, so that's what I'd like you to do. Also, um, you know, I need to need you to tell me what kind of content you perhaps like, but put a, put a private message, put a private message, or you put a comment on the video. I don't care. I don't care how many people see, because I need to know how many people, how many people, and what you're prepared to pay. Now, if I get 100 people all pre prepared to pay a dollar, then obviously it's a complete waste of time. And although I have over 80,000 subscribers, if you look at the videos that I put out, you'll notice that most of them get 10 to 20,000 views. So I don't really have 80,000 subscribers, do I? Let's be honest. I mean, it's the same all over YouTube. You see channels with huge, like PewDiePie, you know, the biggest channel on the internet, basically on YouTube almost, 37 million view, uh, subscribers. But his videos only get, most of them get about 3.5 million views. So only 10% of his subscribers actually follow his videos. So I think I'm doing pretty well because, you know, I get 20,000 on some video views. That's 25% of my subscriber base. Woo, so I'm doing okay. But it's the same everywhere. People go along, they, they watch a video, they think, well, that's cool, subscribe to the channel. Never go back, never watch another one. And you, you'll always get that. So if we say, if, say 15,000 people actually regularly watch my channel, in that case, mm, let's say not all of those are going to subscribe. Obviously, obviously not all, all people are going to subscribe because some people, you know, they can't afford it. Some people are just watching it because it's free and they wouldn't pay whether you held a gun to the head or not. So let's say I've got 5,000 people who subscribe, and that's a big number, that's probably a lot more than I would actually get. And if they all pay $10 a year, that's $50,000 a year, and that doesn't sound like much to you, does it? But it's a shitload more, oh, sorry, it's an awful lot more than I'm earning at the moment from YouTube, so that would be great. I would lap that up. And what I would do with this premium content is, I'd do two things. There would be stuff that stayed premium, was always premium, was the stuff that I had to spend so much time doing in you know, professional production standards, and it was you know, the good quality stuff. That would stay on the premium channel, and only the people who paid the money on an annual basis would get access to that. The other stuff, the stuff that normally goes up on this channel now, I'd also put it on the premium channel, but I'd leave it there for two weeks, and then I'd put it onto YouTube. So if you've got a premium subscription, you get to see it two weeks before everybody else without any ads, and uh, if you don't want to pay a subscription, well, you still get to see you know, the content apart from the really premium content, because two weeks later it goes on YouTube, and you can watch it with the ads if you want to. There you go. So I'm not going to deprive anybody of anything that they're already getting, but I might create some other stuff that you won't get unless you pay the premium, you know, join the premium channel. So there you go. What do you think? I mean, I need your input. You know, is this a stupid idea? Is it, is it a, a practical way for me to protect myself against YouTube having a hissy fit and kicking all the content producers out of the pool? I don't know. It's the only one I can think of at the moment. Now, people have mentioned, what about Patreon and things like that? But, well, I mean, Patreon's okay, but it's just, I don't know. Um, I would rather, you know, run a channel where people paid and so you're paying for something. Patreon's sort of like, you know, here you go, you know, you're a wonderful person, you have some money. I mean, because I also get donations, of course. Um, on my RC Model Reviews channel, there's a little donate button and the money for that goes in the PayPal account and it all goes straight back out buying stuff. <laughs> Very little, in fact, I think in all the years it would be a tiny sum I've ever bought back, you know, to actually pay the bills here. It sits in the PayPal account and I use it to buy product which I review. So that really is covers my, some of my expenses, my overseas expenses. Um, doesn't cover my rent or my power or my food or anything like that. So it's a small amount. Well, there you go. Um, I've waffled on. This must, video must have taken at least three or four minutes now. Um, another epic fail on my part. So thank you for watching. And I'm going to get back to the bench. I've got a lot of stuff to do. Still editing up the video final, well, not the final, but one of the part five of the mini quad build video because I've had some issues with doing stuff. I've had to do stuff about 25 million times. And uh, I exaggerate. Um, sunny 23 and a half million times. So that uh, will be coming up fairly shortly. So if you're waiting there, come on, come on. And also I got today, this isn't a weekly news, I don't know why I'm telling you this, I got some more circuit board, which I'll be cutting up and sending out to people who have said, hey, can you please send us some circuit board, mister? Okay, time for me to go. Another video coming up very shortly about another issue which I'd like your help on. And then we'll get to the really good stuff. Bye for now. Back to the bench.